hello guys welcome to ramta solutions welcome to your lesson on grade 12 financial mathematics so today in our introductory lesson we are looking at the grade 10 and grade 11 revision so these are the formulas that you are by now familiar with right these are the formulas that by now you are familiar with these are the formulas for interest while these are for depreciation and in grade 11 you were also introduced to this formula where we want to calculate the effective interest rate okay so please bear with me i have got flu so i might not have the best voice today but the work has to go on okay so at the end of this video one we will be covering interest both the simple and compound interest we will be covering uh, basically calculating the period of an investment we'll also be looking at straight line depreciation remember this is what you also call simple depreciation okay this is what you also call simple depreciation and even the reducing balance depreciation you can also call it compound depreciation it's still okay then lastly we will be looking at your nominal and effective interest rate however as you can see on the board i have included annuities we will not be treating annuities i will just introduce what they are and we will cover them in the next lesson okay perfect so first thing we're looking at interest so we're looking at interest so we're going to look at simple and compound i'm not going to dwell much on it i'm going to look at simple interest and compound interest okay because it's a revision i'm not going to dwell much in them okay i'm going to do an example and we move on so with this simple interest um this is where we were saying that you your accumulated uh your accumulated amount depends on the initial uh amount that you invested of course with its interest right so if you are given 10 percent per annum it is not 10 percent to whatever interest you accumulate it's 10 percent to the original investment now with the compound your interest is calculated on the opening balance to the account okay so if you are on year two the money that you're getting on year two is calculated on the money that you had from year one the interest is calculated on what you had from year one so the formulas are a equals p into one plus i times n while for compound the formula is a equals p into one plus i to the power n now let's define these guys this a this a is called the accumulated amount it's called the accumulated amount so this is the money you get at the end of an investment while this p is called the principal amount this is the amount that you are investing okay this is the amount that you are investing this i this i is the interest rate okay this i is the interest rate okay this i is the interest rate while this n is the number of years okay it's the number of years that you had this account or that you have had this investment okay so these are the formulas that you use when you talk simple and compound interest okay these are the formulas that you use when you talk simple and compound interest now let us try an example i'm going to adopt a name i think i should use the name lesedi okay i think i should use the name lesedi so for our finance uh i will be talking a lot about lesedi i will assume lesedi is a woman so let's say lesedi Okay, let's say D invests. 
Let's say he invests 4,350, 4,350 rands for five years. Okay? For five years. Okay? Now, the question is, how much would she have after five years if the bank offers? Let me write that down. How much would she have after five years? Right, after five years, if the bank offers, let's see, if the bank offers, Let's try this. Okay, if the bank offers, um, I think I should try 12.5%. Yeah, if the bank offers 12.5% 12 12 per annum interest at one simple basis, two at compound basis. Okay, at compound basis. Okay. So what you seeing here? You seeing that now? Let's say you are investing. She is investing four thousand three hundred and fifty. This is her principal amount, which is four thousand three hundred and fifty for five years. So this means the N is five years. Okay, and then the interest. Her interest is twelve. 0.5% which is basically 0 0.125 right 0 0.125 right 0 0.125 now we are looking for the accumulated amount right we are looking for the accumulated amount now for number one we say we have a equals p into one plus i times n Okay, let's confirm it. Yes. And what is the P? The P was 4,350 rands into 1 plus 0 0.125 times 5. All right? N is 5. What is your answer? Let's quickly punch this in our calculator. We have 4,350 open bracket 1 plus 0 0.125 times 5. What is it? It is now 7,068 rent and 75 cents. All right? 7,068 rent and 75 cents. Now let us look on the compound basis. A equals P into 1 plus I to the N. Let's see. What is this? This is she invested four thousand three hundred and fifty. The interest is zero point one two five. Right for five years. Let's check. Now, when we punch these in our calculator, what are we getting? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the the money that she gets on a compound basis is let me wait for you guys okay it's 7,838 rand and 84 cents okay 7,838 rand and 84 cents okay so this is how we calculate your compound and simple interest okay perfect now we are headed to calculating the period of number two we are going to calculate the period of an investment all right we are going to calculate the period of an investment so because you are in grade 12 it is now easier for you to calculate the number of years of an investment or the period of an investment, okay? Because when you are in grade 11, you are basically um, finding the number of years by trial and error, 
And I'm saying it is now easier because you have done logarithms. I will upload a video on logarithms uh, somewhere next week. Okay. Now, let's look at this. We, we know that we have these formulas, A equals P into 1 plus I, right, times N, or A equals P into 1 plus I to the N, right? So, for this simple interest, it's, it's easier to calculate that period. But for the compound interest, in grade 10 and 11, it wasn't easy for you, right? In grade 11, you were doing that. You were using trial and error method. So this year, it's going to be easy. So we're not going to waste time. We're going to take an example. So let's proceed. So example, um, in our example, I will say, I'm still going to use Lissedi, okay? So Lissedi invested okay let's say the invested um let's say 2800 okay but now she has but now she has but now she has seven thousand five hundred and two rent and 33 cents let me fix this 7,502 rent and 33 cents. Okay. Now the question is, after how many years? Okay. After how many years? After how many years? Was the money in the account? Okay, in the account, if the account, okay, if the account pays 8%, 8.5%, if the account pays, maybe let me change it, 8.56% per annum compounded, yeah, per annum compound interest, okay, per annum compound interest. Yeah, let me put it like this, per annum compound interest, All right? So, let's say invested 2,800, but now she has 7,502 rent and 33 cents. After how many years was the money in the account if the account pays 8.56% per annum comp uh, compound interest, All right? So, because I see the word compound, it means I'm going to use compound interest formula, all right, compound interest. So we're going to say, I can see here, we know our principal amount is, our, let, uh, our principal amount is 2,800, all right? And then our accumulated amount is, this is the money that you have after some time, okay? Is seven thousand five hundred and two rents and thirty three cents. The interest is eight point five six percent. Eight point five six percent is similar to zero point zero eight five six. Okay. Now the question says calculate n. Right. The question says calculate n. Now to do this, we are going to say okay. We have extracted our data. This is the information that we need. Now, the formula that we must use is A equals P into 1 plus I to the N. What is A? They said A was 7,502 rents and 33 cents, while their principal amount was 2,800. 2,800. The interest was 8.56%, which is 0 0.0856 to the power N, because we do not know what it is. So I'm going to say, divide everything by 2,800. You have 7,502,33 3, 
all over or over 2,800 equals, when you simplify this, it is 1,0856 to the power n. Now, because you have done logarithms, when you solve for n, you will say this is n equals log 7502.33 all over 2800 right base 1. Point, base 1.0856 so on your calculator you you have seen this this is log it looks like this if you are using casio if you are using casio it's right below the on button okay i'm using casio fx9 is it a plus if you are using sharp if you are using sharp let me see where it is on sharp if you are using sharp so for sharp let me just say so for casio let me just draw it here um this is on and then this is your log blah blah it's right below it but for sharp for sharp for sharp you must press shift and then pi okay i'm using i'm also using sharp right view okay for sharp you must use for sharp you must use you must press sh um it's not shift you say second function oh sorry i forgot you say second function okay for sharp you say second function so second function and then pi okay pi is next to tangent in between tangent and degree minutes and seconds okay perfect now if you have that your answer is let's see let me also punch it in So correct to the nearest year, our answer is 12. Okay, correct to the nearest year, our answer is 12. Okay, correct to the nearest year, our answer is 12. Now to answer this question, after how many years was the money in the account? The money was in the account for 12 years. Okay, the money was in the account for 12 years okay perfect now we are proceeding to depreciation we are proceeding to depreciation okay we are proceeding to depreciation that's the third aspect that's the third aspect we are proceeding to depreciation now under depreciation we have what we call straight line depreciation okay we have what we call straight line depreciation we also have reducing balance depreciation okay we also have reducing balance depreciation i can write depreciation in full uh -uh. that means i will finish next year so this you can also say it's called uh, simple depreciation if you like it's simple depreciation while this is also known as compound depreciation, okay, if you like, it's also called compound depreciation. So the formula, because the, the ones that we've been dealing with so far has been interest, this one will be, because it's depreciation, the value goes down. So it will be, instead of a positive, it will be minus I times N. Okay, so instead of a positive, even here, it will be a minus. Okay, it will be a minus. So these are the formulas for straight line depreciation and reducing balance depreciation. Okay, so the, the, these variables or parameters, they still mean the same thing. Okay, they still mean the same thing. So... This is what we, when we talk in depreciation, 
this will not be accumulated account or amount. It will now be referred to as the book value. Okay? It will now be referred to as the book value. Okay? It will now be referred to as the book value of whatever. So this is basically how much... Um, Sorry? So this is how much um, an item loses a value. So this A is basically the value of an item after um, some number of years. Okay? This is the value of an item after some number of years. Okay? It is the value of an item after some number of years. Okay? All right. So remember, interest, which we also call appreciation, it's a plus depreciation it's a minus okay perfect now let's try an example again i'm still going to use lesedi lesedi purchased a truck okay um okay purchased a let me say purchased a an 89,000 rent truck. Okay, purchased an 89,000 rent truck, which depreciates at, which depreciates, which depreciates at 9% per annum. What is the value of the truck after 10 years? That's the question. What is the value of the truck after 10 years? Don't, don't end there. What is the value of the truck after 10 years? Okay. On one. Simple depreciation. Remember, I'm not going to write depreciation in full. Two. Or maybe let me just write it in full. Two. On compound depreciation. Remember, if they don't say compound, they can say reducing balance. Compound depreciation. Okay. So, now, our, our data, let's see. I'm just going to write it here a we don't know what it is our p is 89000 rent our i is 9% which is similar to 0 0.09 our n is 10 years right so to answer the question we will say for number 1 we have a equals P into 1 minus I times N, right? What is P? It's 89,000 rent. 1 minus 0 0.09 times ah, 10. So, press your calculator and let's see what we have. 89,000 into 1 minus 0 0.9, I believe. And then 0 0.9, dollar and jack. Okay, what is your answer? What? So after 10 years, this truck is 8,900. I will. Yo. Now, number two, and let's look at it in the compound depreciation or reducing balance method. A equals P into 1 minus I to the N. So this is 89,000 into 1 minus 0 0.09 to the power 10. Sure. To the power 10. Let's see. Oof. Okay. 
so this is let's see so this is 34658.03 i need to confirm this yo okay let me see Oh. Okay, so as you can see, straight line depreciation. Yo, I'm not going to go for that. If you sell me an item and you say it's very depreciating on a straight line method, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. Look at how much it loses value. Can you see that? It's better when it's on a compound depreciation. It's better. Now, let's before i continue let's also check um an investment that's better you can see now it seems um for interest compound interest is better as you can see the difference between compound and simple and compound compound interest would give you greater profit as compared or greater interest as compared to sim right check also when you are when your item is depreciating simple basis oh i'm not gonna go for that never so i'd rather go for an item that's depreciating on a compound basis right on a compound basis so now you're doing finance like you are a banker all right now you're doing finance like you are a banker oh boy oh man right now we're going to look at the fourth item the fourth item we're going to look at is the nominal and effective interest rate. Okay, we're looking at the nominal and effective interest rate. So, now, a nominal interest is one that's quoted more than once a year. Okay, it's quoted more than once a year. Okay, it's quoted more than once a year. Yeah, example would be per month, per day, per quarter, um, per semester, let me just say that, I'm not sure, or they like saying half annually, okay, this one they like saying half annually, or semi-annually, okay. Half or semi annually. Okay. Um, could be per week. Could be per week and so on. Okay. Could be per week. So effective interest is quoted once a year. Okay. It's quoted once a year. So you can you can take nominal interest to effective and vice versa. Okay. You can take nominal interest to effective and vice versa. If they say per year, they will charge you 10% interest. You can calculate how much they are charging you per month. Okay. Especially if you're making monthly payments, you can calculate how much they're charging you per month. Okay. So we're not going to derive the formula, but I will give you the formula, which you got in the first page. Let's go there. This is the formula that you're going to use. Okay. This is the formula that you're going to use. So let me go back to where we are. Okay. Now, the formula is 1 plus I subscript EFF, meaning I effective, equals open parenthesis 1 plus I subscript norm for nominal over this F. Others will use the letter M okay to the power f so this f is basically number of times interest is quoted okay it's basically number of times the interest is quoted okay this is the number of times the interest is quoted okay so this is the formula that you use okay this is the formula that you use the formula is one plus Effective interest rate equals, open parenthesis, 1 plus nominal interest rate over 
the number of times the interest is quoted, close parenthesis to the power, the number of times that the interest is quoted. Remember, when we say, so when we say monthly, how many months do we have in a year? 12. When we say weekly, how many weeks do we have in a year? I think the last time I checked it was 52. I'm not sure, 52 or 4. I think it was 52. And if we say a daily, we consider a normal year. So we will say F is 365. Okay? If we say quarterly, if we say quarterly, the, num the year has four quarters. So F will be four and so on. If we say semi-annually, there are, uh, when we say semi-annually, it means we divide the year into two which means there are two halves, okay? So this is just an example. One that you get a lot is this one here, okay? One that you get a lot is this one here, the monthly quoting. That's the one that you get a lot, okay? Can we thought in a waste of time? Let me show you an example. So example, calculate the effective interest rate of 8.4% per annum compounded quarterly. Compounded quarterly. Okay? So, remember what we had said. The formula was 1 plus I sub EFF equals 1 plus I sub norm over F to the power F. All right? Now, we are saying 1 plus I sub effective equals 1 plus. Remember, the definition I gave you of nominal interest was that it is quoted more than once a year. So, this is quoted quarterly. How many quarters do we have? We have four quarters. Now, what is our interest? Our interest is 8.4%, which is 0.084. 8.4% is 0.084. How many times is this interest quoted? Four times in a year. So your F will be 4 to the power 4. Okay? Now, let's get it. 1 plus I E F F is, let's look at it. 1 plus 0 0.084 over 4, close bracket, to the power 4. What do we have? We have 1.08, we have 1.086668338. Now, what is this? Our effective interest rate, what is it? Obviously, when you take this one to the other side, it will be, one comma zero eight six six eight three blah blah minus one. So this will become zero point zero eight six six eight three two three eight. Now I can confirm if you multiply this number by hundred, it'll give you correct to two decimal places. It'll give you eight comma six seven percent. Okay, multiply this number by hundred. It'll give you 8.67% when you round it off to two decimal places. Okay. So our answer, effective interest rate is 8.67% per annum. You can leave it here and you are done. Okay. You can leave it here and you are done. Okay. You can leave it here and you are done. So this is your revision, guys, from grade 10 and 11. I am aware, however, that we are not looking at, um, what is this? We are not looking at your timelines. We will deal with timelines when we get there, okay? Okay. So the fifth item is annuities. Okay, the fifth item is annuities. Okay, is 
annuity are there is annuities okay so we have annuities are regular payments okay are regular payments that are made to in an investment by saying regular meaning that there's a time line that you need to be making those payments whether per month per quarter per whatever term you need to make them and you don't have to skip all right so we have two kinds we have a future value annuity okay you have future value annuity this is for investment and then you have present value annuity this is for loans and all that you have present value annuity Okay, so this is for investment. Okay, this is for investment and this is for loans and all that. So, I remember I said an annuity is a regular payment. So, we are not really going to dwell much into this, but in the next videos, you will understand that this formula is F equals X into open 1 plus I to the power n minus 1 all over i. You will now understand that this n will have a different meaning and I will show you why. And if you can get that, I'm telling you, you will never go wrong. And then the present value annuity, we call it p, which will be x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the negative n all over i. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. These are the formulas that you are going to use a lot in grade 12. I am not saying, however, that the formulas you used in grade 11, grade 10 and 11 are no longer useful. They are useful. But those formulas are the ones that are helping you to derive this formula. Okay. And you will see in the next video. So with that being said, I hope what we have done has somehow helped you cover what you did in some, I think some of you, you didn't do finance in grade 10 and 11, but whichever the case may be, um, I hope this will assist you. And you're still going to get more videos on this. So without any waste of time, let me bid you bye-bye. Hey, ta-da.